Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, thank you again for attending one of our web sessions uh, that UPG, SciTech and Building Point are putting on for the public. Uh, my name is Peter Thompson. I'm a technical consultant for UPG, um, working with the hardware, software of both um, UPG and SciTech as well. Uh, today we'll be looking at um, the Trimble Geospatial Hardware, just a brief overview of what, uh, what I deal with and what's available to the public. So uh, we've got a couple of products here that we, um, that we deal with. But, you might um, just want to share your screen then, mate. Oh, yeah, there it comes. Cool. Brilliant. There it is. Cheers. Yep. Thanks, mate. Um, so we've got a couple of products here that we deal with. Um, the, we could go on for hours, but um, just with the geospatial, we've just got a couple that I'll go through uh, to give people an understanding of what um, what is around. Um, so we've got a we've got a couple of uh, tablets and controllers available. Uh, the top left hand corner, we've got the T7 tablet. Uh, the one underneath it is the TSC7 tablet. Those two in conjunction are the same controller. Um, as you can see, the only difference is one has a keypad um, and the other one has the keypad to the left, to the right hand side without um, as much detail. Um, depending on how you use it and what you use it for uh, will depend on which one you go for. Exactly the same uh, specs inside it. Uh, there's not much difference. Um, we have the R12 receiver that uh, has come out in the last three or four months. Um, as you can see, it probably looks the same as the R10, but internally it's a little bit different. Um, down below that, we've got the S series. That one there is an S9. We've got S5, S7 and S9 availability. Um, and we have a couple of uh, different models within that as well. Uh, we have the F SX10 that we have. Um, it's the total station scanner uh, built into one. Uh, to the right hand side, we have the X7. Uh, we've had a couple of web sessions there regarding that one. Um, down below that, we've got the TX8 scanner, terrestrial scanner, and we have the DINI level as well. Um, we won't go into too much detail on the X7 uh, or the TX8. Uh, mainly into the GNSS, Total Station and the SX-10. Uh, the key features for the TSC-7, which include also the T-7, um, we use a product called Trimble Access. Uh, this can be used for a product for the construction site called Trimble Siteworks as well. Uh, we've got 7-inch screen. Um, the screen uh, is a glass protector on top of it. Um, so we don't deal with the standard screen protectors like the TSC-3 where they were just a thin film. Um, we've had a couple of cases where the screen protector has cracked uh, due to uh, dropping it or accidental uh, knock and it hasn't damaged the screen in behind it. So that's definitely a benefit for, um, for us and also the customers uh, not having to replace the screen. Uh, Windows 10 operating system, uh, very, very quick. Uh, the amount of data that you can put into this unit is uh, is a lot more than you can with the TC3. Um, the compatibility with all Office software, uh, Microsoft Office and third-party apps. Um, you can use uh, 12D as well as another program that can be used on this. Um, you can use any file sharing uh, types of products, um, including Dropbox, uh, OneDrive. Um, essentially, this is a computer uh, in your hand. Um, we've got a couple of people out there that use this as well uh, with TBC on it as well and a couple of other products that they have in their hand rather than having to go back to the office. Um, 8 gig of RAM uh, and 64 gig of internal memory uh, is quite a lot compared to the TSC3, so it's a, a big, big jump. Um, interchangeable mo modules, MPower modules, we'll get into that onto another slide, um, and hot swappable batteries. In the back of this, there's two batteries that can be changed uh, while you are actually still powered up. Um, you change one battery at a time, and you will not lose power, data, or anything like that 
um, at any stage when moving one battery, one um, dead battery to another full battery. Uh, we run, as I said, Trimble Access 2019 as a geospatial product. Um, as you can see here, it is quite different to the Trimble Access 2017. If you've used it before, uh, we head straight into the map screen um, rather than going through different menus to, uh, to get to where you want to go. Um, the differences, we've got um, a lot more capabilities of uh, design data. Um, and third-party data as well. So that there you can see that's a an IFC where you can use uh, to stake out, um, not just visualise. We've also got an input into the roads module is uh, the 12DA. So when uh, when using um, roads, you don't need to spit out a Genio file, a MOS file from 12D. You can just put in the 12DA straight into roads and define the road that way. Um, we have a Trimble Access uh, webinar next week and we will go through those details a little bit more in depth. Uh, the TSC7 accessories um, we have here on the left hand side, that is the pole uh, mount, um, so that sits in behind the TSC7 and onto the carbon fibre poles that we have available. Uh, it is a lot uh, lighter than some people think uh, and the stability is is incredible. Um, the way that it sits on that pole is a lot better than uh, what you can see when you have it in your hand. Uh, we have a shoulder strap as well down below that. Uh, we also have a, a dock uh, for HDMI and Ethernet out. Uh, so you can use this at home in the office as your PC if you want and then run uh, a network cable into it or you can run a, uh, a monitor to see uh, to have a big, bigger screen. Um, come standard, we've got the shoulder bag um, and the spare batteries and the battery uh, pack as well. Um, that's a part of the deal with the TC7 that we put in there and extra charger as well for that. Um, this uh, option up here is a different configuration for the bottom of it. Normally it would come with a serial port DB9 um, port, but uh, you have the option for two USBs. Uh, for this case, uh, you can run a TBC dongle as well as transferring data, uh, or you could use a 12D dongle while doing other things and uh, with a mouse or a keyboard or whatever it is that you want to use. Um, that is an option that's available as well. Um, this one here, we have the uh, tri-brac um, mount for the TC7, so uh, the tri tripod leg, sorry. Um, this sits on the legs and then you just slide the TC7 in between these two arms here and it's, uh, it stays on there just like the TC3 did with the mount on the back of the, of the, um, of the unit. This one just sits on the legs. Um, speaking about the MPower modules, we have three available. Uh, to the right, we have our standard uh, 2.4 gigahertz uh, radio module, the EM120. That sits in behind the TSC7, as you can see here in this in this photo. This is just for radio connection between your instrument and the controller. Uh, the good thing about these modules now is that they're detachable. The, can, the customer can uh, just use a Phillips head screwdriver, unscrew those the two screws at the bottom here of the module, and pull that apart. So if there is any failures or if there is any uh, anything that needs to be put on to the back of it if you want to run the the other two modules that we've got here. Um, we, you don't need to send it back into us to do any uh, reconfigurations or anything like that. Um, we've got the submeter GNSS um, EM100. Uh, this one would be for a mapping customer if they want to go out without having to use a, a receiver. Um, they can just use this module here. Um, runs with G, um, with Trimble Access as well. Uh, to the right hand side, we've got um, the EM110, which is a barcode scanner. Uh, this one is for asset reading. Um, if you've got a register, um, or if you've got something you, you need to to has an attribute or any more information into it. Uh, via QR scan or any of those types of other scans that are available, 
um, this is the unit that you would need uh, running through Access as well. Um, we've got a couple of customers who have asked about this and they've taken it out with QR, Queensland Rail, um, to take photos of their scan of the barcodes on power poles um, and other assets that QR own, um, as well as doing the survey. So that, that came in very handy for those people. When, they're, um, when the barcode scanner comes into play, um, whenever you scan that code, you will see the information that's embedded into that code. Um, so that's very, very handy when it comes to those sort of things, when there's a lot to um, a lot to survey and you don't know the information when there's there. Um, Trimble Access 2019 versus 2017. As you can see the differences, 2017 on the right hand side, that is the first screen that comes up when you open Trimble Access. Um, and on the left hand side, you've got the new version of 2019 comes directly straight up with the map screen. Uh, as a major change in 2018 when they brought that in um, and I feel that it has made people's lives a lot better. They can physically see what's going on uh, and they've also got the menus up on the left hand side here um, which will bring up exactly the same as what the 2017 access does. Um, <clears throat> the main changes have been visually, I feel, um, making it more user friendly for the surveyor. Uh, we've got that, again, the access um, web, web session next week. Um, if you feel free to come and listen and we'll go into, into depth a little bit more into the access 2019. Um, major changes, more formats that can be brought in uh, and just visually better, better looking and more user friendly. With that, we've got the SX10, which um, can only be used with Trimble Access. Um, we've got some key features here, obviously being a total station and a scanner in one. Um, it's on another level, I feel, um, when it comes to survey. Uh, we've got a different EDM that's built into it with high accuracy total station measurements and high speed scanning capability. Um, Scan speeds are 26,600 hertz at ranges of 600 meters um, and we've got the smallest uh, sm spot size in the industry. So uh, I've used this quite a few times and it has definitely helped uh, a lot of customers who see this and has also helped myself as well for um, taking surveys that I would never ever think I'd ever get to. So. It's helped a lot of people through the through the um, times of of survey and the revolutionary uh, times as well. Um, works with um, it's it doesn't have the eyepiece as a S series would. It uses all different cameras. Um, as you can see, these little um, inserts in the camera in the um, scanner. These are some of the cameras that are available. Um, on the right hand side you can see the the, um, the references with the camera, um, a slope distance of 1,004 metres um, and we've still got three different cameras to, to utilise. So you can see that um, the resolution is quite good. Obviously the closer we get to that house there, heat shimmer comes into play, uh, other environmental issues come into play. So you're not going to see some of the uh, qualities of the house, but uh, the idea of it is so you can uh, use it um, uh, if you've got targets that are long distance um, and those sort of things. So this is uh, another thing that has helped so many people uh, with uh, lane closures, traffic control that's come into play. They just take this out now and, and it's helped them and quick and quicker the amount of data that you get um, I don't think you could ever get with a normal total station. Uh, we got the R12 receiver as well. Um, this has come into play the last three or four months. Um, as you can see, same as the R10 Model 2 and the R10 Model 1, um, internally a little bit different. Um, we've got a new um, a new product, I guess you'd say, inside it, it's an engine, it's called ProPoint. Um, essentially what it does is when you're working under canopies of trees or next to buildings, uh, ProPoint kicks in 
and it helps the initialization a lot quicker um, and still keep the initialization while you're still under those trees while still holding full constellation as well. So uh, a big, big improvement of the R12 compared to the R10 Model 1 when it first came out. The R10 Model 2 can have ProPoint. Um, it's an option that you can buy, uh, just to keep everyone aware of that one if, if they're asking uh, about the R10 Model 2s. Uh, 672 channels. Um, we've got SurePoint, the tilt compensation. Uh, the difference is we don't have an IMU as of yet compared to the 986. Um, not sure what the talks are, but uh, only tilt compensation, that's it. Uh, we've got an XFIL, which is a system that comes into play when you've lost lock for a period of time. XFIL can then over, overwrite that and keep you going for a period of time um, until you find Open Sky again. Um, again, works with Access and also SiteWorks, uh, with a new version of SiteWorks. Um, Wi-Fi capabilities, Bluetooth, uh, cellular Wi-Fi, we have a system now where with the R10s all the way up to R12s, uh, you can actually remote into the unit uh, via an IP address while connecting to Wi-Fi and go through the configuration settings through there, updating firmware, uh, entering receive only frequencies, uh, and there's the list goes on. There's so much in there that um, you can turn it on and off constellations, turning off individual satellites is another thing, um, and that can make your life a lot easier than having to go through a program and a cable, if that's the case. Um, still utilizing the cable for transmit and receive frequencies. If we give you a set file, um, that's still in play there underneath where the R12 is. Uh, you can see underneath the, um, the ports there. Um, we got two different ports, one being um, they both do the same thing. I'm not sure why they've got the two in there, but uh, compared to the 986, it's only got the one in there. Um, it's got uh, six gig of internal memory as well, so when you're doing static um, is the main choice of why you have uh, internal storage, um, and there doesn't seem to be uh, uh, enough data going in for it to stop unless you've been doing statics for uh, a year every day for at least 12 hours a day. So there's quite a lot in there and the transfer is via access or via the web UI as well. They call it the IP link that you log into and then you can download that static data that way. Uh, the software relations to these products, um, Business Center is the key one there. Um, a lot of people when the TSC7 first came out were asking about the cable and how to get in the data from the cable, uh, from the TSC7 uh, back into the computer like the TSC3. That option is not there anymore. Um, they tried uh, back in 2018 and it didn't succeed. It wasn't the greatest because of the, the USB to USB drive. So they've come up with a system now called Trimble Sync Manager, which is a uh, transfer, of, transfer of the data from the TSC7 back into the cloud, which is Trimble Connect. And then from there, you can either download it manually from Connect or then bring it into Trimble Business Center. So that's, um, it helps with if you've got corrupt uh, USBs, you don't have the issue of losing data. Um, you can have automatic timers to sync back to the cloud at certain times, um, and there's no USBs involved at all. So uh, another major breakthrough for Trimble in the TC7. Uh, Trimble Installation Manager is the program where updating firmwares, um, and if there's any codes that have been applied to the units, whether it be a receiver, uh, an SX10 uh, controller, um, you can run the Trimble Installation Manager on the TSC7 as well as the computer and um, download individual firmwares or upload any codes or any new firmware that are available depending on the warranties that you've got on your units. Um, other sectors that we've got with Geospatial, we've got um, uh, not just with geospatial, but within uh, access that can be used is the construction products. Uh, as you can see, left-hand side is the 986. Um, 
just uh, we don't have a code or we don't have a, a system where geospatial will only work with geospatial, we can integrate between the sectors. So 986 and Access can work and SiteWorks and R12 can work as well as long as you're on the highest firmware of SiteWorks, which is 1.2. Uh, in the middle, we've got the Guido system. Um, we can either use GNSS, Total Station or uh, the TX8 or TX6 scanner um, and that's another another session that we might look at doing down the track. Um, we also do monitoring as well, um, automated or manualing, manual uh, monitoring. Uh, there is a module within Access that uh, you can use for the uh, instruments for manual, for manual monitoring. And we also have a system called Sonomite um, for hydro surveys. Uh, we don't have the boat anymore. Uh, we only deal with the transducer and the sonamite, um, so GNSS or total station can go onto that system and uh, anything in a canal up to a certain depth as well, um, you can do your surveys. Support wise, Trimble have got a uh, website, it's, uh, Trimble Access Help Portal, uh, type in any keyword into the search engine up the top um, and we'll find anything that's related to that. Uh, there's videos, there's topics, um, anything, any release notes that you need to know about is all in there as well. Also with our TC7s, T7s, we have a program called Team Viewer, which is a remote desktop um, where we can log in and if you're having issues with your receivers, issues with survey styles, uh, connections or anything like that or just general questions, we can log in and we can give you a hand uh, or answer any of your questions. Uh, we also have a support portal as well with when you ring our 1800 number uh, and this will take you to support gateway who logs a case within our system called CRM. Uh, it's just a better option for us to log the cases uh, and if anybody is looking after a case and they're not there, then somebody else can take that on board. Um, so TeamViewer has definitely helped us as a support network a lot better than um, having to talk people over the phone with their TSC 3s um, We still do get TSC 3 questions, but um, when you do get a TC7 straight out of the box, uh, you'll get to TeamViewer on there straight away. So has helped us a lot and uh, hopefully continue to move forward and, and uh, keep uh, the technology going. So thank you very much for your time and effort uh, for coming to this web, web, um, web session again.